The United States successfully shoots down a wayward satellite amid Russian and Chinese questions about the operation's real objectives. Was the operation a cover to test weapons in the space? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Hashim Mahal Barra. The U.S. military has shot down a malfunctioning spy satellite over the Pacific Ocean. Washington says the move was designed to protect people and that the fuel powering the satellite would harm humans if it survived a fall to Earth. A U.S. Navy ship launched the missile and hit a bus-sized orbiter. That caused the satellite to blow apart into pieces that should burn up as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. And that could take up to 40 days. The action prompted criticism from China. Another space power is asking for more information about the operation and its potential international impact. Paul Allen reports on the controversy surrounding the satellite's destruction. The United States military says this shot at its ailing spy satellite was a success. The moment of impact suggests a direct hit on the fuel tank. The Pentagon says the toxic hydrazine fuel inside posed a threat if it landed on populated areas. We have a high degree of confidence based on the imagery that we have and the, the destruction pattern that the missile impacted the satellite in the area of the tank. We have the, we have the cloud that appears to be hydrazine. We have what appears to be the plume and the fire. But some are finding the U.S. claim that this was merely a safety measure um, most is a little hard to swallow. The slightly more cynical view is that the Americans want to shoot down a spy satellite because if it landed in the wrong place that some of their uh, enemies um, or less uh, favorable allies might decide to examine the contents. The U.S. used an SM-3 missile to shoot down the satellite. The SM-3 is designed to knock down incoming missiles, not orbiting satellites. Its use in this case is unprecedented. Russian and Chinese officials claim the exercise was just a missile test in disguise. China is continuing to closely follow the possible harm caused by the U.S. action to outer space security and relevant countries. China further requests that the U.S. fulfill its international obligations in earnest and promptly provide to the international community the necessary information and relevant data. Last year, China performed a similar exercise with one of its own satellites, provoking similar criticism. The Pentagon is trying to calm China's concerns. We added a lot of instrumentation. We made some modifications to the software to be able to go after a satellite. Um, you know, this is a one-time mod. It is, uh, if you put this mod in, we can't use the ship or the uh, missile for another function without taking the mods out. The military aspects of the mission may have been successful. Now the U.S. has a diplomatic job on its hands to ease the nerves of its critics. Well, according to NASA, there are around 8,000 artificial objects orbiting Earth. Of these, over 2,500 are satellites operative and inoperative. The rest are orbital debris, such as lens, hatch covers and rockets from earlier missions. This looks set to increase as the number of countries launching their own satellites continues to rise. Fueled by the world's growing dependence on communication, navigation, weather and military systems, the frequency and size of the satellites and rockets is also growing. Some worry that it may only be a matter of time that there is an accident. In 1979, a 78-ton abandoned space station fell from orbit with the debris crashing harmlessly back into Earth. Then in 2002, a three-ton satellite hit the Earth's atmosphere, showering debris over a wide area. Well, joining us are our guests from Moscow. Space scientist Yuri Karash works at the space program in Moscow and trained as a cosmonaut. Teresa Hitchens, director of the Center for Defense Information, joins us from Washington, D.C. And Colin Pillinger joins us from Cambridge. He's a professor in planetary science at The Open University. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us to discuss the satellite shoot down, the controversy and the international reactions. Let me start by asking Ms. Teresa in Washington, D.C. The shoot down was apparently a success, but questions remain and the controversy persists. Was the shoot down uh, a necessity? Well, I think that probably depends on what your calculations are. Um, obviously, the Bush administration and the Pentagon 
felt that they needed to make the effort, not just for public safety, uh, I think, but also perhaps because they were concerned about the secret technology that was on board uh, potentially landing intact uh, and uh, people who shouldn't find it finding it. Mr. Yuri in Moscow, I asked the question because the justification presented by the Americans was basically that uh, hydrazine, hydrazine, which is the uh, highly toxic fuel that powers the satellite, could survive reentry uh, to the Earth's atmosphere, which may pose a, a serious uh, health uh, a risk. Um, do you buy into that? I would certainly buy this justification because, as you know, we, the Russians, uh, have similar problem with the Proton launch vehicle, which uh, uses uh, hydrazine-based uh, fuel. And we all know uh, that uh, when the Proton malfunctions for some reason and the remains of the launch vehicle uh, fall um, on the territory of Kazakhstan, the area where debris fell need to be uh, detoxicated because it becomes totally unfit for any living creatures. So I believe that uh, the, primary, the U.S. primary concern was to avoid a true chemical bomb uh, from falling into London, uh, Paris, Rome or Moscow. But there is a counter argument to that, Mr. Colin Pillinger in Cambridge, which is that every year thousands of space objects fall to the Earth with no threat to the humans. Yes, if... Uh an object comes down and satellites do come down all the time they usually come down with their fuel tanks empty i think this spacecraft was different in the sense that it hadn't used its fuel and that meant uh, not only was the fuel itself a hazard but if the uh, the fuel tanks heated up and the fuel expanded then essentially this could uh, behave very much like an exploding bomb while the Americans today, Ms. Teresa, hailed the uh, shutdown as a success, they didn't rule out uh, hazardous uh, objects may hit the Earth. How significantly important is this uh, uh, option? Well, statistically, the likelihood of something large and hazardous hitting the Earth is, is probably small, given that they have shattered the satellite. On the other hand, it's not a risk that they can rule out. Um, another potential risk is that some of the debris may have been flung back up into orbit where it might in the future pose a, a risk to an operating satellite or the International Space Station. Again, that's a small chance, but um, not entirely non-existent. This, uh, what happened yesterday, uh, put into focus many different aspects of the story, like, for example, the space debris and the need to deal with that. Mr. Yuri, uh, is it not the right moment to start talking about better ways to implement a reform to deal with the space junk? Well, it's a good question. Uh, there is about 2,000 tons of junk uh, circling the Earth. And uh, we all know that once in a while, uh, managers of International Space Station program uh, consider uh, making a maneuver of ISS to avoid possible collision with uh, space debris or space uh, junk. And uh, unfortunately, the majority of space junk is located in the altitudes from 300 to 800 kilometers, uh, which is uh, the ISS working altitude. Well, of course, it does not go up to 800 kilometers, but it, it is within the range 350, uh, 450 kilometers. Uh, well, as about uh, any uh, coordinated actions to get rid of the space junk, uh, I believe that at uh, some point in the future, people will have to take care of it, uh, but uh, currently they lack the necessary uh, uh, financially affordable technology to do it. Mr. Pillinger, now th with this theory of uh, space junk forming uh, a will will junkyard which uh, destroys anything in its path, does it raise the, uh, uh, the need now to for more uh, investment among the uh, powerful countries to start dealing with this critical issue that could be a serious risk to the astronauts and the sp space stations? I think uh, space junk, uh, there are 2,500 satellites up there and there is quite an awful lot of space junk. One of my colleagues actually study the effects that uh, tiny particles, even flakes of paint or even tiny drops of uh, of uh, liquid that have been discarded from the space station, when they freeze, if they're traveling with the velocities that we're talking about in orbit, 
they can cause significant damage. Uh, yes, there's a big hazard to uh, human spaceflight. There is also a big hazard to uh, commercial spaceflight. Now, as I understand it, this particular satellite was actually very, very close to uh, the top of the Earth's atmosphere when it was destroyed, in which case most of the junk which has been created will very rapidly fall into the Earth's atmosphere and in small pieces it will burn up and be destroyed, therefore it ceases to be a hazard. Now I think for the long term, and I don't know of any rules about this, I think for the long term there needs to be a very significant change in the, the space treaty to uh, cover space junk, to make sure that everybody conforms to a, a very, shall we say, a clean policy, a clean space environment is what I would like to see. Uh, Ms. Teresa, we've seen the video released by the Pentagon of the uh, launch of the missile, the Intercept. Are we now amid a new frontier in science and technology? Well, I don't think the actual science of intercepting a, a satellite is, is very new. Um, the United States and Russia experimented with anti-satellite weapons back in the days of the Cold War. Um, obviously, China just tested a very similar capability last January. What I'm afraid of uh, regarding a new era is, is less a new era in science and technology, but a new era in military competition in space that could put at risk everyone's satellites. Because as you just heard, when you blow something up in space, you create dangerous space debris that actually knows no nationality and is not going to limit itself in doing damage to the satellites of the combatants. It's a uh, spy satellite and every information about it is classified. Mr. Yuri, I think the Russians should be now very much concerned about what's going on there. Uh, you mean uh, about spy satellites flying around the Earth? Uh, you know, I wouldn't say that Russia is really concerned about uh, this fact because Russians are used uh, for satellites uh, flying over its territory. And um, actually, I did not uh, see any major negative reaction of the Russian authorities uh, toward, uh, the US, toward the United States uh, shooting down its own uh, satellite. Uh, as my uh, colleague just uh, uh, absolutely rightly said, uh, the United States and Russia uh, has been testing anti-satellite weapons uh, for quite a while already, and I really and and I don't view uh, the United what did the United States uh, shooting down its own satellite as uh, the beginning of the new arms race in space. Ladies and gentlemen, time for a short break. When we come back, we ask whether the latest incident reveals the magnitude of space arms race and the need for an international body to regulate space applications. Stay with us.